Welcome back. This is a supplemental video to the evaporative cooler install. The original footage I had removed out of the first video and decided to put it into its own. A little bit more scientific about this, showing some graphs and how it all performs. These videos are brought to you in part by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks for your continued support. This graph shows basically a day of usage with the system. The red line is the outside temperature. The green line is the temperature right after the uh, evaporative cooler, so right at the wall. And then the blue line is the air temperature leaving the greenhouse, so um, it's basically traveled 148 feet uh, through the greenhouse at that point at the blue line. And the yellow line is the amount of uh, sunlight that's uh, entering into the greenhouse. At the beginning of the day, the red line and the blue line are the same. The outside and the hoop house air temperature are the same. The green line is a little higher. I'm not sure why. Um, it's, it is right next to the fish tank, so it may be getting some of the heat um, off the fish tank as there's no air movement near there. Um, that's just a speculation. And then around uh, 7 o'clock, the sun has uh, come out and the uh, hoop house air temperature starts to spike along with the uh, temperature at the evaporative cooler. And at that point, the uh, fans turn on and the uh, temperature will drop um, at the evaporative cooler as it starts to uh, uh, cool the air down. And there's a couple up and downs in there because as the air cools down, then the fans turn off. And so they're toggling on and off for about um, a half an hour or so. And at the end of the day, you can also see them toggling on and off as the uh, air temperatures go down. So then in the morning, we are getting some full sunlight in here. And the uh, air temperature outside um, is always a little bit less than the uh, air temperature leaving the greenhouse. But you can see that um, there is some pretty good cooling effect going on. Um, where we're cooling that air down uh, about 15 degrees or so. So by the time it does make it all the way to the other side of the greenhouse, it's he heated back up and is um, leaving the uh, greenhouse at about the same temperature as the uh, external air. Now normally if this wall wasn't in place, um, I, you would typically see the uh, exit air leaving about 15 to 20 degrees warmer than the outside air. So this is actually a huge difference to see uh, the inside air temperature staying so cool. And then around um, 11 o'clock or so, you can see the sunlight uh, going up and down. These are basically some clouds that are starting to roll in for the uh, afternoon. And then as there's a little bit less sunlight in there, you can see that the uh, blue line, the air temperature leaving the greenhouse, is actually cooler now than uh, the outside air temperature and mainly because we just aren't getting as much solar gain inside the greenhouse anymore. Uh, later on in the day, about uh, 2 o'clock or so, um, you can see there's a lot less light that we're getting. Um, I think uh, we had full overcast skies at that point. And there is a huge difference now between the outside air temperature and the uh, inside air temperature leaving the greenhouse. So um, without that solar gain uh, heating up the air, um, that cool air is just passing right through. And then uh, towards the end of the day, um, around uh, 8 o'clock or so, the sun has gone down um, behind some trees. So the greenhouse is in full shade and the uh, air temperature uh, within the hoop house isn't warming up anymore. So it's about the same as the um, evaporative cooler temperature. And then by 9 o'clock as we leave the graph, uh, all the temperatures are starting to converge again because it's uh, dark outside. Now let's take a look at the operating costs of this. And these are uh, fairly rough numbers, um, more of a typical day of usage. So, so saving a couple pennies here and there, that's more of uh, just averaging errors. Uh, so just sort of keep that in mind. This is just sort of a general rule of thumb of uh, operating costs. So the evaporative uh, cooler pump runs on about 25 watts and uh, from morning to evening it runs about 13 hours a day so at our electric cost uh, that cost about uh, six and a half cents a day 
uh, to operate. Now the evaporative cooler itself uses about 25 gallons an hour of water. It's about 20 gallons an hour if it's uh, more humid out, if it's like 70% humidity. And when the humidity is down to 40% um, or so, uh, the evaporative cooler can easily consume uh, 30 gallons an hour. So that's uh, 325 gallons a day of water that this needs. Our well pumps one horsepower and runs about uh, three quarters of an hour a day to pump uh, 325 gallons of water. So it costs about 11 and a half cents a day uh, to run that uh, well pump. So overall the evaporative cooler costs to operate is 18 cents a day or five dollars and 41 cents a month. And again, um, that five dollars and 41 cents a month is under summer conditions during the late summer or early spring. Um, it won't have to run uh, quite as much, but this is basically our worst case scenario for a month. Now the exhaust fans, um, that's sort of a weird area. They do run um, all day long and whether I had the cooler installed or not, they're going to be running. Um, so the cost to run those comes to be uh, $5.62. The monthly cost is $168 uh, to run those, and that is about in line with my, what my electric bills are uh, every month for the, this greenhouse. Now the interesting part is when the um, fans are toggling on and off in the uh, morning and the evening because the evaporative cooler is running, they actually don't have to run as often now, so I shaved a half an hour off of the operating cost. Um, so instead of the $5.62 per day to run, that brings it down to $5.40 a day to run. So by having the evaporative cooler running, I'm saving a staggering $0.21.6 cents a day. But if you add in the evaporative cooling cost of $0.18 cents a day, I'm really saving uh, $0.3.6 cents a day or a dollar a month in electricity costs. Um, so overall, operating cost uh, with or without the evaporative cooler uh, makes no difference. What I'm really gaining is that temperature decrease in the greenhouse, which makes a huge difference with growing uh, the crops like lettuce that really need a cooler environment. This is a pretty good chart showing the overall efficiency of the system based off of what the outside humidity is. The blue line is the humidity outside and the green line is the temperature difference um, right before the evaporative cooler and a temperature sensor right after it and I just subtract those two values from each other. So all throughout the day as the humidity goes down the efficiency of cooling increases. I found this chart from Arizona Almanac that uh, basically corresponds to what my graph is showing and here if we have a relative humidity of 80 percent we get a temperature difference of around three degrees and at 70 percent humidity we get a temperature ranging from five to six degrees depending on what that intake air is. This chart is a bunch of random samples from the previous data I'm not having a huge data set in here going essentially from 60 to 90 percent humidity. At first it looks like it's a nice linear line, uh, but in actuality the efficiency is somewhat exponential. Uh, so that's why there's this curved line in here. And unfortunately though, I don't have any data sets down in the 40 and 50 uh, percentage for humidity. Um, so the uh, line does sort of take off when it really shouldn't be. It should be uh, much, much lower. Lastly, if you're planning on installing one of these, it's probably a good idea to know what your relative humidity is in the area. And here's a map of the United States. And if you're in the southwest area, you can plan on having an average humidity of less than 50%. So a, a cooler like this would be very efficient to run. We're in Connecticut and our average humidity is over 80% most of the time. So they work, but not as efficient as what you would get out in the West. So that's about it for this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.